Without further ado, let's go right ahead and go into the first segment, which is going to be talking about the biggest questions for each Southwestern Division team. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the slides real quick, just so you guys can see the teams. And again, this is obviously one of those, um, this is the, the conference that I said, it's like, you know, it's a little bit, mm, there's only one real contending team in this conference and everyone else is just, you know, trying to find their spot in the league and where they land. So for the first team, we might as well get, we might as well get the first team out of the way. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks, easily the best team in this entire division. They made it all the way to the postseason. They did it with um, um with near ease, almost like they did it with near ease. Like you know, they never had to play a game seven, and they also were able to. I mean, Luca and Kyrie played phenomenally throughout majority of the postseason. Not so much Kyrie in the finals, but in the in the rest of the postseason, yes, they played. They played great and. Obviously, the biggest question for this team going into next season is Clay Thompson, the missing piece for this title contending team. Because made the finals last year, they lost because they um Kyrie and what's it called Kyrie and Luca they sort of didn't really get the help from their teammates as you would really expect, and Kyrie also didn't really play that well either, and. On top of the fact that the Celtics are just a much better team, like, clearly the Celtics were going to win in this series, and it was, they were at a huge, they were at a bit of a disadvantage most of the time, so th the big question that I got for them is that, is Clay Thompson going to be your missing piece? Because, like, Clay Thompson, yes, he's a big name, and a lot of people um, know who Clay Thompson is, they know exactly how good he is, but now... Clay Thompson has his name has sort of gotten um, a bit more infamous than it has gotten famous because now people are only talking about him for um, because he went 0 for 10 in an elimination game, and even then, like people are still questioning, like is Clay Thompson still good enough to be a solid shooting option and a solid scoring option for a championship contending team? Because that's what he was for Golden State. Like, a lot of people, they love to, like, um, say that, oh, Steph Curry, he was the face of the Golden State franchise. If you have a prime Steph on your team, then you can win. A lot of people forget that Steph Curry hasn't won a playoff game without Klay Thompson. So it's not just Curry. Klay Thompson is a very, very important part of those Golden State Warriors wins, especially down the stretch when he needs to hit important shots. So... Really, would he be the the question that is the question is will he be able to do this here? And Clay Thompson is coming off of his worst season since his second year in the league, and his numbers seventeen point nine points per game, so basically almost eighteen points per game, three rebounds, two point three assists, thirty eight point seven percent from three, would be a career year for most NBA players. But Clay Thompson, on the other hand, not so much. So when you look at this kind of performance, based off of like, you know, the standards that we uphold to him, it's unexpected. And will that production be enough for Dallas? That's really like the big, big question. And obviously, like, you know, there's no doubt that he'll improve the Dallas roster, but will he improve the Dallas roster like for the postseason and be consistent enough in the postseason? That's that's going to be a completely different story. Next team on this list is the Houston Rockets, and the biggest question for Houston is who exactly do they want to build around? I think it should be Sengun, because he's the he's one of the younger players, and like um he still has some years left under his contract, so they could still utilize him, and but the biggest problem with that is like yeah it could be Sengun. But then you could you could also it could also be Jalen Green, who I'd like to remind people was balling off towards the towards the end of the season. There was like a whole stretch where Jalen Green would just get bucket, 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 bucket every single time. And it's like, who do you build your um who do you build your roster around? Like that's really that's really the big question. But if I was Houston, personally, I would do it around Sengun, 
and I would sort of have him be the number one option going into the future. And again, like, let me know in the comments what you guys think if you would rather have Elfrin Sen um, Sengun or Jalen Green as your player to sort of build around. Because in my opinion, Green is, yes, he, he can get buckets, yes, but I would much rather have somebody who can score and facilitate and make easier looks for your teammates as opposed to someone who is just a ball dominant scorer like Green. Because like Green is a literal bucket getter. Yes, that is 100% true. But that's sort of the only highlight that he has. Meanwhile, Sengun, he can score. And then while being able to score, he's also a very good facilitator and he can pass the ball very effectively. So, you know, it's a little bit of a... It's a little bit of a de like a decision on which one of those two would you rather have, but I personally would rather have Sengun. So, next team on this list is the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, this team was one of the worst teams last year, mainly because Ja Morant wasn't around the team most of the time, and because in a sense Ja Morant wasn't around the team, there was no way that they were able to generate consistent enough wins due to his because you know they need his basketball skills in order to accumulate wins. And the fact that he's just not on the court means that it's just going to hurt the team significantly. Now, I remember in previous seasons, the Memphis Grizzlies actually played a lot better without John ja Morant for some reason. But that apparently, like, and I thought that the Memphis Grizzlies were actually better without Ja, but that's entirely untrue. And it shows that this is, um, that they absolutely need Ja if they want to have any sort of chance of competing. And the big question that I have for them is, will they be able to pick up exactly where they left off since Ja got hurt and since Ja got suspended? Because before all of that, all the stuff and things that he did, the Memphis Grizzlies were winning. And I mean, obviously they lost in the first round to the Lakers, but aside from that, they were winning. And then they get then he gets suspended, and after he gets suspended, then he gets injured, and then he gets out for the season, and then there goes the Memphis Grizzlies. So, really, the big question is, can this team actually make it back into the postseason and pick up exactly where they left off in competing? Because now they're going to have to compete against a lot more competition in this Western Conference. Not only do they have to deal with Anthony Edwards, now they got to deal with the loaded Phoenix. I mean, they had to deal with it before, but they have to deal with um what are the teams they have to deal with the mavericks now as well maybe the clippers not entirely sure but the western conference is incredibly stacked and zach ide is going to be also another question that i have for them now that i think about it is how is zach ide going to be um a good caliber center because and now the reason why i say a good caliber is because a lot of people compare him to boban and i don't really know how to feel about that so I'm just curious exactly like how good Zach Ide is going to be. We're running out, we're running low on time, so I'm going to like speed run through um majority of this. So next we have the Pelicans. Obviously, they acquired DeJounte in a trade, and so their lineup is consistent of DeJounte, CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, and then the rest of the lineup. So really the biggest question that I have for them, aside from the fact um aside from can they get a good center? is is this Zion Williamson's best year? Because I really want Zion to succeed. And aside from LeBron and Giannis, he's arguably the best finisher around the rim that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I really want him to succeed. And he has the tools that he needs to succeed. So hopefully he can, you know, actually stay healthy for this season. And when he was healthy last time, he was able to make the All-Star game, so... And then finally, Victor Wimbanyama and the San Antonio Spurs. And obviously, the biggest question for the Spurs is what will Victor Wembenyama do next? What awards is he going to get? What records is he going to break? What sort of bar is he going to set for us? How much better is he going to be than last season? Though that is the question. And with that, we are out of time for the first segment. So now I'll go ahead and go into the second segment where I talk about the NBA changing its replay rules, which is a very new thing that I just read about. So I would very much like to talk about that right after this short break. So be sure to stay tuned. 
feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Getting my way in to be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it, the noose fits, the moose shit, a stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody 